Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Vintage NASCAR Owners, L.G. DeWitt. In 1965, L.G. DeWitt founded DeWitt Racing and made his debut as a NASCAR Grand National Series, now Cup Series, team owner. He remained an owner from 1965 through 1980. They had 13 different drivers make starts for the team. This video takes you through the team's existence year by year. For the 1965 NASCAR Grand National Series season, LG DeWitt owned a number 48 Ford for two starts. The team had John Sears behind the wheel. His best start was 20th, and his best finish was 10th, both coming at the end of the season at Mayock. The next season, in 1966, DeWitt brought John Sears back to drive for them full-time. The team started the season using the number 48 for one race, then using the number 04 for 11 races, then dropping to zero and just using the number 4 for 33 races. Although, all together, <clears throat> they made 46 starts out of 49 races. I mean, basically, that was full-time back then. So... Sears, best start, was second twice in the spring at Hampton, then in the summer at Greenville. His best finish was second in the summer at Manassas. Overall, he scored 11 top fives and 30 top 10 finishes, finishing 7th in the final point standings. In 1967, DeWitt Racing returned to the series full-time once again, with Big John Sears returning to the number 4 Ford full-time. He made 41 out of 49 starts that season. John's best start was first in the spring at Savannah, and his best finish was second in the fall at Columbia. Overall, he scored one pole, zero wins, nine top fives, and 25 top tens, en route to a fifth place in final point standings. John's little brother James made one start, making his NASCAR debut in the fall at Rockingham, driving a number 44 Ford starting 29th and finishing 33rd. Elmo Langley made two starts behind the wheel of a number 4 Ford in the summer at Macon and Martin at Marysville. At Macon, he started 9th and finished 3rd. At Marysville, he started 7th and finished 5th. Henley Gray also made one start for the team in a number 4 Ford in the summer at Charlotte, starting 27th and finishing 28th. After a season... Where, where several different drivers shared driving duties, DeWitt Racing signed John Sears to drive the number 4 Ford full-time for the 1968 NASCAR Grand National Series season. Sears' best start was second in the spring at Columbia, and his best finish was third in the summer at Greenville. Overall, he scored zero poles, zero wins, five top fives, and 24 top ten finishes, on their way to another top five points finish. For the 1969 NASCAR season, L.G. DeWitt and his NASCAR team, DeWitt Racing, once again brought back Big John Sears to drive for them full-time for yet another season. Now, Sears, this, uh, well, I guess this what would end up being his final full-time season with DeWitt Racing. In their number four Ford, his best start was third, twice, in the summer at Greenville and in the fall at Columbia and his best finish was second in the summer at Kingsport. Overall, they scored 17 top fives and 27 top tens, finishing seventh in final points. A couple other drivers made one-off starts for the team, Leroy Yarbrough and Jim Harpjuice. Yarbrough had the best race at Trenton, starting and finishing fifth in a number 14 Ford. The following season, in 1970, DeWitt Racing made a big change that would prove to be a change for the good. By changing their primary drivers, picking up Benny Parsons, making 43 out of 48 starts in a number 73, a number 72 Ford. His best start was first, and his best finish was second, both coming in the fall at Hampton. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, 12 top fives, and 22 top tens, en route to finishing eighth in final points. Now, brother.
brothers, James Sears and John Sears, both made one start apiece. James had a better race, starting 23rd and finishing 10th in the spring at Rockingham in a number 4 Ford. Buddy Young made two starts also for the team in 1970, driving a number 13 at Rockingham in the fall. He started 14th and finished 10th. Then in 1971, Benny Parsons returned to DeWitt's number 72 Ford. His best start was second and twice in the spring at South Boston and in the fall at College Station. His best finish was first in the spring at South Boston. Overall, they scored zero poles, one win, 13 top fives, and 18 top tens, on their way to finishing 11th in final point standings. This was the team's first ever victory, uh, the victory that they scored at South Boston in the spring. Uh, Ray Hendrick also made one start for the team at Rockingham in the spring, driving a number 42 Mallory Speed Ford, starting 21st and finishing 27th. So, in 1972... R.J. Reynolds began sponsoring the premier series of stock car racing in NASCAR, making the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. This shortened the schedule from roughly 50 races a season to around 30 races a season. Parsons once again returned to DeWitt Racing, DeWitt racing full-time behind the wheel of their number 72 Pop Cola Mercury. His best start was third in the spring at Rockingham, and his best finish was second in the spring in the summer, at Riverside, rather. Overall, they scored 10 top 5s and 19 top 10s, finishing 5th in final points. For the 1973 NASCAR Cup Series season, DeWitt Racing owner LG DeWitt brought back Benny Parsons once again to drive their number 72 Chevrolet. His best start was 2nd four times, then in the spring at Richmond and Rockingham, then in the summer at Bristol, then in the fall at Dover. His best finish was first in the summer at Bristol. Overall, he scored zero poles, one win, 15 top fives, and 21 top tens on their way to the 1973 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. Believe it or not, Parsons only crossed the finish line on the lead lap one time throughout the entire season. By, <laughs> by far, this would be Dewitt's best season as an owner. Points wise, for sure. Now, statistically, no, they would have be much better seasons later in the 1970s. Diva Racing at attempted to defend that championship in 1974, but to no avail. Benny Parsons did have a pretty decent season, though. They did pick up a full time sponsor in Kings Road Fireplace. His best start was third twice in the spring at Atlanta, then in the fall at Martinsville. His best finish was second twice in the spring at Talladega, then in the fall at Richmond. Overall, they scored 11 top fives and 14 top tens, finishing fifth in final point standings. Now, Jim Opperman made one start in a, in a second team car at number 77 King's Row Fireplace Chevrolet at Pocono in the summer, starting 14th and finishing 8th. Then in 1975, Benny Parsons once again returned to the DeWitt Racing number 72 Kings Road Fireplace Chevrolet full time. His best start was first. F five. <clears throat> was first five times. In the spring in Martinsville, in the summer at Mayock, in the summer at National Fairgrounds, and in the fall at Richmond. <clears throat> so that was three times. His best finish was first in the spring at Daytona. Yes, they won the 1975 Daytona 500. Overall, they scored three poles, one win, 11 top fives, and 17 top tens, finishing fourth in final points. The following season in 1976, Deepit signed Parsons to drive full-time once again in that number 72 Kings Row Fireplace Chevrolet. Jake Elder became the team's crew chief in 1976. Best start was first, twice, in the spring at National Fairgrounds, then in the fall at Richmond. His best finish was first, twice, in the summer at National Fairgrounds, then in the spring at Dover. Overall, they scored two poles, two wins, 18 top fives, and 23 top tens, on the way to, to finishing third in final points. The team did get a new sponsor for the final eight races of the season, 
First National City Travelers checks. David Obbs and Earl Ross both made a one-off start for the team in the 19, in 1976 Daytona 500 with sponsorship from Coca-Cola. They both finished 34th and 39th. The LG DeWitt owned DeWitt Racing focused all their attention to the number 72 First National City Travelers checks Chevrolet with Vinny Parsons behind the wheel for the 1977 season. Their best start was first, three times, in the summer at Nashville Fairgrounds, Talladega, then in the fall at Richmond. His best finish was first, four times, in the spring at Nashville Fairgrounds, in the summer at Pocono, and in the fall at Dover and Charlotte. Overall, they scored three poles, four wins, 20 top fives, and 22 top tens, finishing a solid third in final points. For the 1978 NASCAR Cup Series season, Parsons returned to drive the number 72 Chevrolet full-time for the final season. His best start was first twice, in the spring at North Wilkesboro and in the summer at Pocono. His best finish was first three times, in the spring at Richmond, Darlington, and Riverside. Overall, they scored two, two poles, three wins, 15 top fives, and 21 top tens, finishing fourth in final points. LG DeWitt signed Joe Milliken to drive the number 72 appliance wheels Hayes Jewelers, Oldsmobile, and Chevrolets, full-time, and a run for Rookie of the Year. His best start was first in the spring and National Fairgrounds. His best finish was second in the spring at Rockingham. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, five top fives, and 20 top tens, en route to six in final points. He did not win. Nin 1979 uh, Rookie of the Year. That ended up going to Dale Earnhardt. For the 1980 NASCAR Cup Series season, DeWitt Racing ran their first nine races of the season and their final nine races in what ended up being their career. Joe Milliken made those nine starts with his best start being second in the spring at Rockingham, his best finish being fourth in the spring at Riverside. Overall in those nine starts, they scored two top fives and five top tens. DeWitt just could not go on any longer as an owner, as the prices were skyrocketing in, in auto racing, and not to mention, the team did not have any consistent sponsorship by 1980. So after nine races in the 1980 NASCAR Cup Series season, DeWitt Racing was forced to shut down. Overall, the team started 530 NASCAR Cup Series races from 1965 through 1980, scoring 13 poles, 12 wins, 177 top five, top fives, and 315 top tens, with a best points finish of first in 1973 by Benny Parsons. Thanks for watching, everyone, and take care.